Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shu Lin Zhu from University of California, San Diego. Uh, today, I'm going to present our paper, Automating Visual Privacy Protection Using a Smart LED. So cameras are now pervasive on consumer mobile devices, but they also trigger an outcry of privacy concerns. Uh, visual privacy is getting more and more concerning in people's daily lives, such as in our homes, locker rooms, uh, museums, hospitals, uh, trade shows, etc. Sometimes people or objects are uh, unexpectedly being photographed and they don't want others to share or distribute the photos. But in most cases, they don't know how to deal with it and the only way is to hide the sensitive object. Uh, the sensitive object. Notice that they are all passive physical objects which cannot have any active content protection mechanism such as movie anti-piracy approach. The visual privacy protection in such passive physical space still heavily relies on rudimentary approaches such as uh, the warning signs and the human monitors. And there's no way to automatically enforce the requirements. And our system called, uh, called Light Shield is designed to change this situation. So Light Shield uses a smart LED light bulb which can be placed to everywhere inside the room. And the emitted light actually covers the space to automatically enforce the privacy protection by degrading the quality of the captured images or videos. In addition, our system can allow and also authorize the camera to capture a good image where image quality cannot be affected a lot under strong sunlight. Last year, uses the watermarks to enforce the, the protection. Here's an example of last year's camera authorization. So the picture taken by the authorized users will not experience any degradation of, on the quality. But at the same time, Lashield can still block other people from illegal photographing by generating strong artifacts inside the image, which is shown here. The authorization uh, scheme introduces lots of flexibilities to protect the scene. But when strong sunlight coming inside the room, like from, uh, coming inside the room from a window, uh, quality degradation is limited. So Lashield embeds the watermark into the, inside the image, which conveys a uh, no distribution message allowing online servers such as Facebook or Instagram to block and prevent the image from being distributed online. Social network opens a big hole of racial privacy leakage since currently people do not have any, any restrictions when they upload images or videos online. So Lashfield has image corruption module, the authorization module, and the watermark module. So now let's first look at how image corruption works. So almost all of these cameras are based on rolling shutter. Rolling shutter means camera receives the lights row by row in a sequential manner, opens and closes the shutter. The speed is high enough so that uh, our eyes cannot see this process when we take images, but the cameras can. After all rows are exposed, we will get an entire image of the scene. Based on the principle, principle of camera's rolling shutter, we ask ourselves, since camera can produce a good image, based on the rolling shutter under the normal static lights, what will happen if we modulate LED slide waveform? Here we can see if we do this, different rows will receive different amount of lights, which will generate stripping effects on the image as shown here. We have the black, white strips, uh, straps and the RGB straps, if we use a monochrome or RGB LED respectively. This stripping effect provides the basic privacy protection using our system because it decreases the quality of the image. However, in order to make the system more robust and efficient, we must consider several challenges uh, in this case. Such cases will get our light waveform design. The first, challenge is, the first challenge is that we need to make sure the waveform tra is transparent to human eyes, which means people should not perceive any flickering effect. Achieving this goal can make our system realize automatic visual privacy protection. Human eyes ac accumulate an average amount of light received in a time duration, and that's why we can only perceive the low frequency process in the world. More specifically, we cannot perceive the light flickering with frequency larger than 100 hertz. 
So that should guarantee no frequency components under 100 hertz in this case. We further notice that a simple waveform with only a single frequency does not suffice to make system robust. The stripping effect is a good way to protect the thing, but there's an exception. If the duration of the RD waveform equals to the exposure time, then each row will receive exactly the same amount of light. So the straps will be removed. This is not good since we don't want attackers to bypass our protection. Since single frequency cannot ensure the protection, it is straightforward to use multiple frequencies. That should guarantee there are at least two types of strips with different uh, frequencies within each frame. And since a single exposure time can only remove straps with a single frequency, there's no way to bypass our protection anymore in this case. However, attacker can also take a video which contains many images called frames. Having multiple frames makes the attacker have more chance to recover the scene by, combin by combining their clean parts together. Light Shield cannot completely, completely prevent such attack, but we further scramble the waveform's intensity to largely increase the amount of frames needed by the attacker for successful recovery. It is, based, it is because illegal attackers should guarantee that the correct exposure of each row and the scrambling, scrambling waveform will just make that difficult. Also, the attacker needs to make the camera completely stable for a very long time, which is not viable in most uh, privacy-related applications. Moreover, note that recording a video is useless under dynamic scene since, since the scene is uh, since the thing will keep changing. For now, we discussed about how that should crop the image. But sometimes we also want to allow some specific users to take good image at the same time. So like other authorization schemes, our system needs some negotiation between the LED and the authorized users. The basic principle here is to share the waveform information with the authorized users via a secure side channel. Once the authorized user obtains the waveform, she synchronizes with the LED and recovers the scene based on the obtained light waveform. But there's a question, how can we just unblock one person while still blocking all the other people? So let's look at more details about this technique. To realize the authorization, LED generates a waveform which contains multiple frequencies. Authorized user has the information of this waveform, so she can Choose, way, choose when each frame starts and ends to make sure that each frame only contains the one single frequency, which is shown here. So she can set up the exposure time to remove the single frequency stripping effect as we uh, illustrated previously. But for the attacker, the guessing when each frame starts and ends is nearly impossible. So the image still contains multiple frequency straps. Recall that strip, stripping effect with more than one frequencies cannot be removed by a single exposure time. This is how we unblock an authorized user while, stop, while still blocking other people. We notice that sometimes when the ambient light is strong, such as sunlight coming from the window, that shield cannot realize a strong quality degradation because, because the ambient light actually degrades the contrast, be, degrades the contrast by adding a large constant intensity. In such cases, instead of unreasonably increasing the LED's intensity to gain higher contrast, we choose to embed information into the image, which conveys a no distribution message and allowing the online servers to block and prevent the image from being distributed. A key challenge here is how should I should encode the information so that it can be robustly conveyed to the policy enforcers, despite the uncontrollable attacker's uh, camera settings. There are lots of variables that can be encode, uh, encoded into the waveform. Uh, the most straightforward one is drive's intensity, but it's too fragile since detection suffers from things and uh, ambient light noise. We cannot use the duty cycle either since duty cycle of the straps changes with the camera's with camera exposure time. Frequency is independent with ambient light and the exposure time. However, it changes with the camera sampling rate. 
So we normalize it using the ratio of two frequencies to encode the watermarks so that it can be independent with all these variables. So we detect watermark by extracting frequencies and calculating the ratios. In this figure, we embed, we show that we embed three frequencies, so which yields to three different ratios. If these ratios are equal to some predetermined values, then the image is regarded as confidential and server will not allow it to be uploaded and distributed online. This figure shows our smart LED prototype. We generate an on-off keying waveform specified by, specified by the light shield. For authorization experiment, we developed a specialized app using Android's camera to API to precisely control the frames. To set up the, to set up the experiment, we mount the LED instead a uh, diffusive plastic cover similar to a commercial light, uh, LED light bulb. The target scenes containing five capture sensitive objects. To analyze the results, we use three indicators. PSNR measures the intensity distortion, SSM measures the structure distortion, and the CIDE 2000 measures the color distortion. So normally a good image should have PSNR larger than 25 dB, SSM larger than 0 0.9, and the CIDE smaller than four. Last year degrades the image quality a lot as shown here with PSNR only uh, with to the, uh, six dB, SSM uh, equal to 0 0.3, and CIDE 2000 equal to 35. So we tested 10 phone models and found that it is uh, effective against all of them although there are some variations of quality degradation. This figure shows the frames recorded by authorized user and attackers at the same time. The authorized user does not, does not experience any stripping effect, while attackers are still being blocked at the same time, having an obvious stripping effect as shown here. We embed black and white barcode as well as multicolor barcode. The false positive rate is smaller than 5%, and we found the detection rate can be larger than uh, 90%. Attackers can remove some straps by manipulating camera exposures, but our system embeds multiple frequencies, so there are some redundancies to make it robust in this case. We also did a lot of experiments on Lashio's robustness, and please refer to the paper for more details about those graphs, figures. Uh, first, waveform scrambling successfully prevents possible recovery by the attackers, either with camera exposure manipulation or at the video taking. Next, the post-capture image repairing algorithms, can, like denoising, cannot re fully recover the scene since some information on the scene has already been lost. Light shield has, is also robust against the normal, normal ambient lights and also flashlights in your, on your camera. Uh, finally, light shield overcomes long distances by placing multiple LEDs inside the room, such as we can replace the existing room lights. We also notice the two side benefits. The automatic white balance cannot work under color strap, since it cannot find a good reference to white pixel. If the scene is dynamic, then the attacker can even have smaller space to manipulate the camera exposure because of motion blur. So to conclude, light shield can protect people and passive objects automatically by making the capture recordings extremely unpleasant. It is lightweight, fast to set up, and cost effective. We also successfully unblock specific users at the same time by designing a camera authorization scheme. For strong ambient light case, watermark can be embedded and detected by social network server to prevent illegal uh, image or video distribution this is the end of my talk, and thanks for your attention.